I've always been fascinated by railroads. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's heavy iron traveling at speed on some lonely night, firebox roaring, whistle blowing, the sound and feel of steel wheels rolling on steel rail. Or maybe it's the physics and history that fascinate me. A little less than 200 years ago, the first steam locomotive ran on the continent. In short order, this low friction, low tech method of pulling heavy loads transformed America. Like many, my fascination led me to model trains. I began planning vast railroad layouts and building realistic scenery and structures, imagining myself working in the thing I had built. In the end, though, I always found something essential was missing. The tiny wheels and plastic injection molded parts left me disappointed and frustrated in some fundamental way. So I bought some wheels, big heavy and machined from cast steel. Finally, I felt I was moving in the right direction, maybe even on the right track. This was more like it. I machined some steel axles, assembled wheel sets, bought a couple of electric moped motors, a couple of moped batteries, brushed up on electronics, and built a train puller, a riding car, and a flat car. There was a problem. I only had 10 feet of track. So I bought 1,300 feet of aluminum rail, 8,000 track screws, 250 rail joiners, 500 stainless steel track nuts and bolts, 7 yards of gravel, 50 bags of concrete, and then I ripped and cut 1900 cedar ties. I planned my new layout. All this would form a loop around my house and shop with a couple of turnouts for an engine and car storage shed. A simple layout to be sure, but somehow this was fine with me, and as a plus the scenery had already been built and was incredibly realistic. I gathered some tools to start clearing and leveling for the roadbed. I bought a rake, then some pruners. I needed larger pruners. A shovel, a bigger shovel, a wheelbarrow, a chainsaw, wait I already had that, but it broke. I bought a bigger chainsaw, a tractor, and about 50 pairs of gloves, and a water bottle. I got to work clearing, leveling, and hauling dirt from high spots to low spots. Some trees were cut, and stumps removed. An interested friend offered to help, Andy. Andy got to work assembling track sections using the cedar ties, track screws, and aluminum rail. In all, Andy assembled just over 50 10-foot track sections. After assembling all the track, Andy started work on the trestle. I helped a little. It's named in his honor. After the trestle was done, we moved on to laying track and ballasting. This is how it went. Finally, after a year of weekends, construction of Cammy's lift bridge started. It's named my wife's honor for a whole variety of reasons I'm sure you can imagine. With Cammy's lift completed, all the track for the layout was installed. Let the trains roll! Wheels clicking over track joints, running fast, fate in my own hands, a cup holder, these were the missing elements that left me frustrated in my early forays into railroading. 